Hello, everybody. This is Bob King Panaris, along with my broadcast partner over there, Brian Cadoz Sr. And uh, this is D Backs Weekly Inside the Game. And this is a special edition. And this is the uh, final report for the NLDS. <laughs> and uh, uh, let me just say that uh, Brian and I are credentialed media members, those of you that have been following us know that already, but uh, uh, Brian and I were both there last night as the Diamondbacks uh, wrapped up the divisional series against the LA Dodgers. Brian? Bob, I, I'm just, I'm still kind of giddy over last night. I think one of the highlights of the night was watching you in the clubhouse afterwards getting, I don't know, <laughs> was it a bottle of champagne or a bottle of beer poured all over the top of your head? Uh, um, I, but yeah, yeah. Unexpectedly, one, but... one of the one of the players that I have no idea who it was <laughs> poured a whole bottle of champagne on my head. I didn't I turn it. around. I did not turn around to see who it was. I just <laughs> took it like a man. You took it like a champ, man. Uh, you know, and frankly, what an honor, and you know, and, and and to be there to see that, and not only that, but to be there to 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 feel the energy in the clubhouse of the the, the players, young and older. Um, you know, after a hard fought uh, series, which, which of course they came out on top sweeping the Dodgers. We you said that um, already, but that's uh, the, the energy in that room after the game was uh, very special. And just to be part of that um, for me anyway, uh, was phenomenal uh, to, to walk around and just kind of embrace the moment with the guys that had been on the field right there in, on the field playing in that game. Um, and, to, and, and it kind of humanized them to me. It made me realize just how much, you know, and I don't want to say it in a wrong way, and it may come across as being a little wrong, but just to notice the little boy in him. There's still a little boy in him, you know, and I love that element of of the of baseball where it kind of brings that out of out of the players in some cases. And last night I saw that and it was really neat to see. Um and, and again, the game itself was super exciting. But one of the, my one of the memories that I will take with me going forward is being a part of that energy and just absorbing it and being able to say, you know what, there is still this purity in the world. It's just a matter of looking for it and being able to identify it. And last night in that room, that was pure joy. It was awesome. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a, a great atmosphere. And now I've been, you know, broadcasting now, this is my 30, six year of broadcasting and I have been to many celebrations in locker rooms. As a matter of fact, I've even been in celebrations when the White Sox won the world series back in 2005. And I don't think it was as wild <laughs> as it was last night in that Diamondbacks clubhouse. You know, it was, I mean, there were, there were people just, Everywhere having a good time, uh, celebrating. But, uh, you know, I, I even scoped out Tori Lovello because I wanted to see Tori. You know, I, I feel like Tori and I have um, become friends in some way or good acquaintances, I should say. And as a matter of fact, uh, even pregame, when I went to this pregame conference, uh, he was looking around, he scoped me out, he nodded, I gave him the thumbs up, <laughs> and then after the game in the clubhouse, I had the opportunity of, uh, you know, giving each other a, a big hug, and as I said to him, it ain't over yet, mm -hmm. and he said, no, it's not, Kingpin, yeah. and uh, just, uh, you know, this team and we had talked about that early this morning and people, we do talk, do talk offline without <laughs> recording things. We do talk all the time. And, and, and as a matter of fact, last night, uh, Brian and I were sitting in two different locations in Chase field and we were texting back and forth. We couldn't <laughs> call each other because we couldn't hear anything. I couldn't hear a thing, man. There were 48,000 people there. Uh, let's just talk about that crowd for a second. 48,000 plus there. I think it was 48,175. It was so loud. 
even before the national anthem, they are chanting, beat L.A. I'm telling you, I haven't heard, I haven't heard that place as loud. Now, I'm sure it was back, and I didn't cover the team back in 2001 when they did win the World Series, but it was noisy. The fans were ready, and the Dodgers were not. The oh. Dodger, uh, I don't know if the Dodgers were not or if the pitching was just so good. I mean, to hear, and I was sitting in the press box next to uh, our good friend Bob Nightingale from the USA Today. And, you know, we were talking back and forth. And, you know, one of the things we talked about before the game, he said that Mookie Betts it was uh, – uh, three for, th or maybe that's what his final total is now. Three for 38 in his last 10 playoff games. Mm. That's horrible. Wow. Okay. Wow. wow. That's and how many hits did he get in this series in 11 at bats? You had the, you, you had the, I mean, I was shocked to hear it. Look at that. Nothing. A goose egg. A goose Nothing. egg. Nothing. And, and Freddie Freeman, the number two punch. One hit. One hit. That I was after you told me I had to. I mean, not to not to doubt you at all, but you know, as a journalist, you I'm probably look. Up and you probably you probably I just wanted to double right? check it, double check a little bit. You know, I was sure as sure as you know what, man. Um, but you know what, Bob? That's was the game plan. I think the D backs had a game plan. Um, they knew that even fat, you know, uh, being let's say let's face it, Mookie Betts and 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 Freeman going into the game were hitting over six hundred against Fat. So to to have a game plan work out and get them to swing at pitches that he wanted them to swing at, as opposed to getting behind in the count and forcing a pitch into the zone where they're waiting on. I think that right. really helped a lot, but let's go back to the crowd. The crowd right. was electric, electric. And again, I think it's important to recognize that, um, you know, when push comes to shove, the Valley does support its baseball team. Uh, Cause last night was one of those shoving matches and essentially it could have been 50, 50 where the, the yep. Dodgers could have, you know, rallied, but last night, and I'm going to say it, we watched, even though we're on opposite ends of the ballpark reporting, right. we saw four home runs in one inning, the third inning. And historic, historic that was event. His never, history, never has it been done in playoffs ever. It I mean, was, it, it was amazing, first well, of all, right? It was a, there was a fifth one in there that should have been a home run, but it was off by a couple of feet. And then the very next pitch, Moreno that, left center it, field. Exactly. That's what I was going to get to. First, he hits one that was called fair as a home run down the right field line. That actually was a foul ball. They went to the replay and they, they did see that, yes, it was a foul ball. So here's a guy who went into the dugout, did his high fives already, right? <laughs> he did two high fives and this at bat. Uh, he came back out. He's with his bat. The very first pitch, he hits it left center field almost to the deepest part of that ballpark right in the little corner for a home run and how many times have i said it or we said it actually this year and we've been doing our show now for for quite a while so we have. Is, is that we have said that gabby moreno is the heart and soul of this diamondbacks team corbin carroll might be star uh, there's other stars along in, in the team, but you, Gabby Moreno is, is the guy. I mean, not only is he a great hitter. Okay. I mean, he is also now from what I understand and what I, what I've seen, um, he is the first, is it the first catcher to hit three home runs in a series or the first rookie catcher? It might be a rookie catcher per se in, in three home runs in, in a, um, in, in a playoff season. And this season's not over. No, no. He, he very well could, could be, you know, a adding on to this. No, but he's a spark it, plug, man. He's those definitely, like you said, heart and soul, but at the same time, he's got a lot of toughness. The kid got a ball banged off of his left, his right hand last night. I, I'm sitting in the dugout, in the dugout, in the in the press box, thinking to myself, "Oh my God, he's broken his hand! Oh my God, he's broken his hand!" And and the ball hit him right on those metacarpals, you know, that break so easily. But you know what? He got up and moved his hand around. And I think he even tried to throw it. He threw it. I think he played another inning. 
um, or, or you know, he was taken out. He was he was actually taken out uh, in be uh, in between that inning. He played finished the inning, right? Last, he finished the inning, yeah. And then and then they took him out because Lavello wanted to make sure. Hey, listen, that my yeah. catcher is okay. Hey, uh, good luckily, call. Luck, luckily, from 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 what. Uh, and Bob Nightingale brought his own TV, like his own TV, his iPad, so he had the game going next to us. Yeah. And because um, we, it's very hard to see the the TVs. Not where you were sitting last night. No, I had a beautiful view of that said, screen, man. Yeah, they said that um, his hand was really swelling up. Yeah. Um, but but luckily, um, it was fine. Uh, negative. And he's ready oh. to go for game number one of the God. It's hard to believe. So I'm saying it. NLCS. Yeah. They have taken it to the League Championship Series. Here was a team that wasn't even supposed to be in a playoff situation this year. Um, and you know, they very well could have. And, and we've talked about this. If you go back through our old podcast, uh, Brian and I both believe that if Gabby Moreno still was catching mid-season long, and when, when they brought in that Carson Kelly, and they stay, st- started him every game, I think if Moreno was playing, I still they had a chance to win this division. But you know what? It doesn't matter now. Yeah, no, no. You know, retrospectively, Bob, I think that you're spot on. I think that at the end of the day, when we what we noticed right away was not necessarily the stats; it was the the chemistry. What was what was missing all of a sudden, you know? And it was exactly. it, it was it was Gabby, you know, and some of the things that he does that impact the game that maybe aren't necessarily written down. You know, the the intangibles that it takes from you know as a and he's going to be a great manager someday. Frankly, you know, he, the way he manages at 24 years old behind the dish. Uh, I I expect in the way he hits, um, I expect Gabby Moreno someday to become a manager in Major League Baseball. I said it here, said it here first. If that's what he decides to do, he's young and he's got a lot of career left. But at the same time, those are a the lot. kind of players that make it as uh, as managers down the road. But that's down the road. Um, you know, uh, as far as you know, what I'm not going to go as far as saying this was Clayton Kershaw, this was Bobby Miller, this was Lance Lynn, this was the lack of Freddie Freeman hitting, this was Betts, this was Muncie not doing his thing. But I'm going to say this: the D-backs just outplayed them. Bottom line, from start to finish, they and, they and owned. Dave, it is what and, it is, right? And Dave Roberts said that. Dave Roberts said in his post-game interview is that um, he congratulated the Diamondbacks. He said they outplayed. Uh, they, you know, of course, he wanted to Mike Hazen, and Mike Hazen deserves a lot of credit. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But he just said. They outplayed us in every facet of the game. No, start to finish, inning one of the first game, five runs right away with five players at the bat. And and frankly, that tone of the series never changed. Now, of course, baseball is, you know, you play nine innings. It's a long game. But yeah. it term, in terms of overall theme, that was set in the first inning of the very first game, and the D-backs yes, just was. continued on throughout the series until the last out of the last inning in that right. regard. But, but you know what? It doesn't matter with this team. This team is playing so well. So let's go back to the Milwaukee series. They were down in both games. Yep. Three runs and two runs. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they came back like they have all year. You know, the, we've called them the answer backs. I call them the uh, the throwbacks. Um, you know, uh, they just they they have answered they have answered this all season basically, except for that stretch in July, right? When we've already talked, killed the beat beat the horse to death is when they got on that losing streak. Um, you know, but the thing is, is that. They just had a a great season. I looked at it, and we said it. I thought that they they backed into the playoffs a little bit with that four game losing streak uh, at, at the end of the season, but they made it. And then they just said, "It's a new series. It's a new um, you know, it's a new season." 
and that's exactly what happened. Uh, one one thing is is uh, what we had talked about even before this Dodger series, and and, uh, and the Milwaukee series is, you know, if the Diamondbacks come out and play the way they played in the beginning part of the season, Brian, we said this, um, you know, they're going to be okay. Yeah. And the thing is, let's say this. All three games were won in a different way. That's what makes that's what makes this snake that we, a three-headed or a four-headed monster. Yeah, you don't know what you're going to get. Yeah, and what did the scoreboard what did the scoreboard say uh, last night right after they won? The chaos continues yeah. because that's what they that's what they like to call it because. They can win in so many different ways. No. Um, I did get a chance to watch uh, last night, you know, the guys on TBS and the MLB Network, by the way. I watched both of them. They're all on YouTube for you fans to see if you do want to go out there and, and, and take a look for, you know, a Diamondbacks recap of the Dodgers series. Um, they these guys were like all cheering for the diamondbacks. Like, like they're the Cinderella team. They're a fun team to watch, hmm. you know, yeah. and uh, they've come a long they, way, Bob. They've come a long way. I mean, let's face it. With Lord, Lord, Tara Lovello, he has in the last two years that I've observed this little bit here and there, has taken a group of young players that didn't understand how to win. Taught them a little bit about winning. Now it's gotten them, you know, I question whether they would have the heart to play for him at the end of the year. And I was way off because they do. They really, I think they love the guy. But at the end of the day, I think his philosophy of, of, of having some emotional intelligence enough to treat individual players individually while treating the whole collectively and being consistent along the way, making those yeah. decisions and living with that. And I think at the end of the day, what you have now is he's created an environment where the players expect to win as crazy as that sounds every game they expect to win and with that being said in in the past when they would go down two or three runs maybe it wasn't important maybe it was okay we'll come back maybe but i can almost guarantee you now that they will be disappointed in themselves if they let themselves go down by three runs that it, it makes a bigger difference to teams that are expecting to win as opposed to a team that's expecting to have something go against them and coming back from that these guys are expecting to win no matter who they play. And I'm not going to go as far as saying anything other than they play game one on Monday against either the Braves or the Phillies. But right. with the Phillies and Braves beating each other up, let them fight it out. Five games if they want. It doesn't matter. The D-backs are going to get, in my opinion, are because of Lovello's managerial style, his ability to connect to the players on an individual basis, individual level, to the extent that he can turn that energy and make it better for the whole and then treat the whole the same. That is so hard to do, but that's something that we have in Arizona that I don't know if Bruce Bochy has it. I don't know if Dusty Baker has that because, you know, it's a different way of, te it's a different way. It's a different way of uh, teaching and, yeah. um, and, and baseball um, maybe isn't as re responsive to that style. But at the end of the day, Bob, he's teaching even me that you can manage this way and potentially come out on top. And um, so I've learned a lot from Lovello and his style. And I know that those young boys, those young men and some of the older players as well uh, have as well. So my hat's off to Tori yeah. Lovello and the staff. I, I had a chance to speak to Joe Mather last night. Hey, look, we've been we ripped Joe Mather, the hitting coach, a little bit this year for their lack of hitting. But I praised them a little bit last night because they did a phenomenal job in this series, the last two series of pitch location. They have plate discipline, better two-strike hitting. Uh, so many things that we had, you and I, Bob, had been talking about, they weren't doing. They actually did. Right. And, and it's only fair that, um, that you know, when I have an opportunity to point out that I was wrong about some of the things that I was saying, or at least I noticed that they had best have been working on that. It's 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 uh, So Joe Matter hat off to you. Joe Matter and your staff hat hats off to you as well for getting the guys ready to swing the bats because they did a heck of a job with that. Yeah, it was uh, really something. And, and, you know, you're talking about Tori. Uh, Tori, this is Tori's seventh year here in Arizona. And uh, he's actually become 
he's even growing as a manager. He's gotten better at, at, at what he's doing. And it's kind of funny. It, it, you know, we're, we're not stats guys. And we, we everybody who watches us knows that. We're more feel guys. I feel like in the season, he was more of, of taking the analyst report. To me, in the playoffs, it seems like he's become a feel guy like us. No, I mean, it's, listen. It's illustrated, Brandon, absolutely. Brandon Fott didn't get the win last night, but as far as I'm concerned, he was the winner. Yeah. You know, yeah. and and he came out when he saw that double, and he said, you know what? I'm not going to let this guy get in trouble. I'm going to go ahead and bring in Manaply. Yeah. You know, so... That's why I say his style right now has even changed from the way that it was during the regular season to the playoffs. And that, to me, is the mark of a, not only a good manager, but uh, a, a guy who's really understanding his surrounding and what's going on, and he's not getting caught up in the moment. Now, he, what he did say is, though, listen, I'm a baseball fan, too. And what I saw in those four home runs in that inning is like, yeah. he's never seen that. Well, no one's ever seen that before, right? No way, so, man. That was amazing. I, but, and that's why I say they can win many different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing, again, back to Lovello, his team's, from day one that he's come in here seven years ago, uh, they've always played hard. Yeah. I mean, they've always given their all. And, and, you know, and that's when they didn't have the talent. They've been through a 110 loss season just two years ago. And here they are. And, and I'm going to say it right now. They are on the brink of a war going to a World Series. Here's here's the thing. They're going to be going into the NLCS. They win the NLCS. They're on the World Series. Oh wow! Yeah. What, you know, I don't even want to think that way, but I, I know. Oh, but but, he, but it's true. But, but here, hundred percent. No, but here's a team that n nobody. I mean, uh, and I've said this before. I walked in almost the first weekend with Bob Nightingale from the USA Today. We were walking down, you know, how you, you walk in through the, the main entrance and then you have to walk all the way to the to the press elevator, right? And we're talking and we're going, yeah, Bob, I think that this, we're both the saying the same thing. I think this will be a good year for the Diamondbacks, but we still both agreed. We believe they're a year away. <laughs> I, I, I guess I'm still shocked. I'm almost speechless, which is really tough for me. But the thing is, here they are on the brink of going to a World Series. Yeah, man. You teach them you how know, to win, Bob. That's all they needed to learn. They, I think they finally reached to that, that crescendo of, of and, and actually, it's right on time, too. With Lavello, maybe there was a certain element of progress that he was looking for along the way that would lead to this inevitability, which is getting into the playoffs and then letting your players speak for what your philosophy was. And at the end of the day, I think that with those two wins in Milwaukee, I even think some of the players were a little bit surprised. Wow. Maybe we, yeah. you know, we, you know, we did this and now, and before you know it, like, wow. And now they're not surprised. It, it's shocked maybe briefly, but it doesn't surprise them yeah. anymore. I don't think that they beat the Dodgers, maybe the way they did it. Right. But right. but but overall, I think that the the, the D-backs after the game last night more than likely felt we deserve it. And if not us, who? Why not us? Why shouldn't it be us that gets to the World Series? What, I think that you know, Milwaukee. So yeah, I, yeah, I, I I agree. I think that Milwaukee series gave them a lot of confidence going in uh, against the Dodgers. That hey, listen, we can we can finally beat these guys. Yeah. you know they've been they've been there. The, the the Dodgers doormat for 10 years. And I'm sorry, Dodgers fans. You know what? You can cry all the frick you want right now. But you know what? <laughs> it, 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 one turn deserves 
uh, deserves another. And you've been beating up on the Diamondbacks for 10 stinking years. And it's about time that the Diamondbacks handed it to you. As I said to a, a buddy of mine uh, the other day, is the Dodgers looked old. I'm, I, I just call it the way it is. Call the way, it calls the, we, we, that's what we do around here. I know, and Clayton Kershaw would be the first to tell you, you know, that he probably felt older, you know, than 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 he ever has in the past. And maybe that last game that he pitched against the D-backs may be his last game. I don't know. Nobody knows. But the, the Dodgers are going to have their own. And, you know, and I feel I don't feel too badly for the Dodgers. They've had a lot of success in the past. And, I, I don't you know, feel it is what it is. It is I don't what feel it is. bad for the Dodgers. It is what it is. They, they got to pick up the pieces. Not us. You know, we're still moving on. The D-backs... The, the freight train is gone from Phoenix, but the train is still moving forward in Phoenix, literally. Yeah, and I, I felt I wonder, a little bit bad for wonder, Peralta, but well. I wonder next year if they're still going to be using the Peralta. You better not be doing that Freeman uh, train down nine nothing, man. Oh, yeah. How about, how yeah. about, yeah. He down, better not do that. That down Freddie nine Freeman dance. He's, nine he's nothing. Doing he's doing a dance. Yeah. I was a little embarrassed for the guy, frankly, you know, and we talked about that, but, um, yeah. But that's, that's what you get when you get to those bigger cities. I don't know, but, you know, Arizona, small market team. They even lost their, you know, hate to say it, but Bally's, they, you know, they were on TV one day, next day they're having to be, uh, MLB's having to pick up the pieces because nobody wants to take care of the lowly D-backs. Well, everybody wants to see them now. Everybody wants to know what's going on now. And that's what's important. And I think that they've earned that. And frankly, um, it's been fun to be part of that, to, to enjoy the ride, to report, to be at the games, to feel the energy, to take the fans into the nicks and crannies of some of the things that we get to do that maybe they don't. It, and it's a privilege, frankly. It's a it's a privilege to be able to do that, and and it, uh, and that's who I look at it. So I'm I'm right. grateful to do it, and grateful to be part of this ride. And I know you've been doing it for many years. And me, two years in, this is a a quick turnaround for me to be in something this special. And so I'm not really grasping it quite like maybe you have, but you're teaching me. So I appreciate um, you reminding me just how important this is and how rare this is. So yeah, Bob, and- um, the Monday of the 16th, game one. Uh, Arizona versus Atlanta or Philadelphia in the, one of those cities. So Monday, uh, it looks like it's going to start at five o'clock, five oh seven, um, and that's set in stone. Uh, the the schedule was right. released today. Yeah, it's going to be eight oh seven in the east and five oh seven here in the valley. So um, it, it is what it is. The guys get a couple of days off, not much time, but you know, just enough to heal up and rest, get the wounds, to ice them, get the hand back to normal. Uh, Moreno's part and. Um, Get ready to go because uh, whether it's the Phillies or the Braves, they're going to have their hands full, and that's just the way it should be. I, if I'm a betting guy, I'm thinking it's the Phillies, and the only reason I say that is uh, what what the what Atlanta did to Bryce Harper by mocking him because the guy gets doubled off to end the game, and and. Bryce Harper has now woken up, especially yeah. <laughs> against Atlanta. Um, I, I'm thinking it's going to be the Phillies. I think it's going to be the Phillies Diamondbacks. It'll be a, a great matchup. Uh, Phillies did go to the World Series last year, if I'm if I had that right. Uh, the Phillies played the Houston Astros last year in the right. World Series, and, and they and, and they lost. And they, they, they actually, the, the Phillies beat the Padres to get in there. And the Padres were playing pretty good at the end of the season last year. And, you know, the Phillies earned that victory. And they, they went into the World Series and darn near took that, too. Um, yeah. So um, I expect it to be the Phillies as well, Bob, frankly, just based on the way that they're playing with the Harper incident as well. Don't poke the bear, man. That's all I can say. Don't That's poke right. The don't, bear. don't poke the bear. The Diamondbacks will still be underdogs, in which they like. Um we hope that uh, the Phillies come out and say something bad about the Diamondbacks because <laughs> because that'll be even well the, the Diamondbacks have it they're playing with a chip on their shoulder yeah they have right? enough stuff going yeah that locker room fodder doesn't get through to them lavello has got them so focused on what they're trying to do they could be a yeah. terrible less than what everybody else is doing they're they're tunnel vision right now they've got one thing and literally I think Tommy Pham was saying it last night in passing I remember hearing him say that he's only four wins away from World Series, and if you have that type of tunnel vision, where you're where you're only focused on what you're trying to accomplish, hell with everybody else. I think that's the best attitude to have when it goes to something like this, because they're going to be in a hostile territory no matter where they go. But if they can focus oh, yeah. on yeah. nine, on getting three outs per inning, having some good at bats, working hard for each other, 
following the game plan, doing what you can do, and having Zach Gallon and Merrill Kelly in a seven game series is pretty good for us. I like our I like our chances. So have we? Do Do you know or not? I know we we only have a few minutes left here, but do you know uh, they haven't named a starter as of yet, have they? No. For uh, for that, so we don't know if they're going to flip Gallon back around or just have go with Kelly in the first game. It doesn't really matter as far no. as I'm concerned. I think they'll they'll go with the what they what they have in the past, which is you know make sure that guys have had adequate rest as many days off in between starts as they normally get. And if it happens to be a Kelly day, they may go Kelly and then go with Gallon on the next game because this gives you Gallon in a, in a game seven. Like like what like what they did then uh, with uh, with the Dodgers because Kelly started out. Yeah, no, I'm thinking that might be the way to do it. But at the same time, to get off to a good start, knowing that you're three games in Phoenix um, away with one win and you're busy, you know, you know, there's three home games. Then all of a sudden. And they can happen in, you know, three home games. But at the same time, they've got to win game one or two to make that happen because there are three straight games here in Phoenix. Um, right. there, there is going to be, by the way. Um, anyway, we'll talk more right. about that um, next week because we're yeah. out of time here. Okay. Well, Bob, it's a good visit, man. Good, good, good podcast. Good, solid. Good. Congratulations on both of our companies being part of the NLCS. Looks like, you know, we're both approved for that. And we look forward to, you know, getting out there and doing a lot of uh, reporting to an extent that we can and sharing the insights with the with the fans, with with, the, with our audience. We appreciate you all for joining us. So thanks for being here. And we, we look forward to engaging with you further down the road. Bob? I, I'd, say, I'd say you uh, you you said it all right there. Uh, we'll, just, we'll just sign off and say, uh, how about this? You know what? Go D-backs. Go D-backs. <laughs> <laughs>